Hello guys, Bud here with Dependable Lawn Care and today I am getting ready to install the fuel door, as I call it, uh, for fueling up my mowing trailer. So let me show you real quick what I went with. This is, a, uh, this is actually a fiberglass um, with a plastic frame. Uh, it's an RV hatch door. So unlock it here. And it's it's actually an insulated door, even though you know I, I didn't necessarily need insulated. I just like the quality of it. Um, it's got a, a seal all the way around to keep moisture and dust and stuff like that out, uh, bugs, you know, whatever. And then, as I said before, it's it's locking, so you know when it's closed, you've got it you've got it locked, and somebody can't uh, get into it. And I purchased this as I do a lot of things on Amazon. And uh, let's see if I can get the lighting right for you. So here's the actual listing. It gives you the information. There's the price, uh, price that I paid. Um, this is a Rec Pro RV baggage door, 12 by 12. So uh, rounded corners, and it's made specifically for RVs, compartment storage, um, trailer compartment doors, that type of thing. So anyway, uh, that's what I bought. And uh, as I said before, I went with it because it has a, a seal around it and it's lockable. There are other types you can get. In fact, I had one already that I was going to use that was just square. It didn't have the rounded corners, um, but it wasn't as nice. It wasn't lockable. It didn't have a seal around it. It was just metal on metal. And I thought, you know, that's not really going to be the quality I want over time. So, so I went with this one. Now... Uh, what I'm going to use to install this is the same thing that I used when I put the uh, the vent in the roof of my other trailer. This Pro ProFlex RV. This is just a clear, flexible sealant, um, and this this installation in particular is totally screwless. You notice there's no screw holes in the flange, nothing around it. Um, you just simply cut out your cut out your hole where it's a nice tight fit or snug fit you know and then you put a bead of caulk around the flange on the inside and you stick it in place and you're done you know it's glued in place um, so anyway that's what I'm gonna be doing guys I'm gonna go in here in the trailer and we're going to trace out where we want it and we're gonna cut our hole and stick it in place so let's uh, let's go inside the trailer I've got some of my tools here um, and obviously I'm gonna need a saw some tools to cut through the plywood and to cut through the metal but before we get to that let's uh let's position it so i've moved all my fuel cans over here kind of got everything where i want it um, i've checked i've checked my spacing up here on top to make sure i've got enough space that i'll be able to fill the the fuel tank um, if for some reason i don't have enough space i can always move that down some but with it being gravity fed, I wanted it to get it, you know, as, as high up as I could within reason. So, so um, what I've decided is on my fuel door, I want it, I can either go on this side of the stud or this side of the stud. Well, I want to put it on this side of the stud because I want to be able to reach over here as far as I can so that I can fuel up my fuel cans, my big tank, and then probably the mower in front. Um, I don't. I don't think I'll have the reach to, you know, reach all the way back to the second mower. But I'd be able to at least at least completely fuel up one mower while I'm while I'm doing this. So uh, as far as position, I'm I'm kind of keeping in mind that I don't want it too low. I also don't want it too high. If if for some reason I need to move this thing down, let's say let's say I moved it down ten inches. You know, I don't want to have it too close for that reason so um, right about here is what I'm thinking right about in that area is about the right height it'd be a comfortable working height you know I'm also thinking about the fuel line coming from the pump and then coming into here I don't want to go up too high um, and take away you know too much slack out of the hose where I can't reach very far so anyway um, roughly in that area uh, that's probably about the top side right here so I'm gonna I'm gonna set the fuel door in place, 
and trace around the trace around the back side. So um, this is the back side of the door. So I want to trace around. I want to trace around this part because I want that part to be as uh, nice and tight of a fit as I can get, so that my my flange doesn't have to cover anything. You know, I've, I've got a little bit of playroom there, but I want this I want this pretty snug. I don't want it to uh, having any room to move, vibrate, uh, you know, anything like that. So I'll slap it up there, trace it out. What I did is I centered it up. So this, this screw right here and this screw right here, that's the center of these studs. And they're, uh, they're inch and a half by inch and a half, I believe, square tube. And so I've got it centered up between those. And, you know, as I said, I, I brought it down a little ways. It's, uh, it's well above my, my fuel tanks, but, uh, but not too high, not too low. <laughs> okay, guys, this is probably the most nerve-wracking part of the whole thing. So uh, what I did, as you guys know, I used to do a lot of handiwork. So I have access to a lot of tools. Um, I have a trailer full of tools. So I grabbed one of my larger uh, hole saws, and this one... This one happens to be a four and a quarter. Actually, I could have gone larger, but that's just the one that I had handy. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and, and cut out the four corners. And as you can see, you know, the metal isn't very far away. So it's really easy, especially with that hole saw, to get a nice straight shot. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take out all four corners with the hole saw. And then all I need to do is connect the holes. And to do that, I'm going to use my reciprocating saw with a with a metal cutting blade because I want to have a nice uh, smooth cut, smooth as possible. There's my, my little cutouts. So uh, looking at the trailer from the side, you can see about how high that up, how high up that is. It's uh, about belly button height right here. So so not too high. Um, Definitely in a good spot, I think, from the outside. So that's where it's going to be. Now I just need to connect the dots. So that's looking at it from the side. So it uh, lays in there nice and flush. And then I'll pull it out real quick so you can see my masterwork here on the, on the hole. So the hole didn't turn out too bad. Um, it was pretty close. I used my... Uh, my right hand and left hand snips, my Milwaukee snips, those things are super nice by the way. Um, but I used them to finish trimming up the hole, you know, just take off little little trimmings wherever I needed to so that everything fit good. So now we're ready to put some caulk around the, uh, around the hole. Actually, I'll probably put it on the flange itself and then we'll pop this dude in place and That'll be it, except for sealing it up on the inside. Show you this before I plug it in. Um, got a nice bead, nice heavy bead all the way around that, and you don't have a lot of play time with this stuff. It's uh, it's kind of like silicone on steroids. So anyway, we're gonna put it in the hole, make sure that everything seals up good, and that'll be it. Um, I'll probably probably bring my ladder over here and just kind of rest my ladder against it with a uh, rag hold it in place so let's go ahead and put this thing in I'm not gonna be able to do it with one hand two things one that was about the perfect amount of caulking because it just squeezed out just a little bit which tells me you know all the way around which tells me that I've got a good solid seal all the way around uh, two wear disposable gloves because I got one little freaking fingerprint right there and it's probably gonna be permanent uh, or I'll have to use some kind of cleaner to get it off um, had a dirty fingerprint right there where I accidentally touched it. And uh, a third thing is that this, this sealant won't keep. So if you're going to use it, um, it didn't even take, you know, a fourth of a tube to do this. So if you're going to use some of that stuff, if you've got more than one thing to use it on, that would be good. Go ahead and use it up because it's not going to, it's not going to keep. Um, it's going to harden up in the tube pretty quick. But anyway, um, it's all in there, sealed up a good good around it. I did what I said, folded up a rag and, and put it against the door so that the ladder isn't, you know, scuffing up the door. And uh, the weight of the ladder is, well, I'll show you. 
So the weight of the ladder is just basically kind of holding everything into place until it's sealed up and and has a little bit of time to set. It only takes a couple hours and this stuff is good to go. Um, and it's paintable, which, you know, if you know 100% silicone is not paintable. So this stuff's a little better in that regard. But anyway, um, again, that's what I used. And uh, I'm going to get some painter's caulk. I have some of that. I'm going to use some of that on the inside to seal up around the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and go do that now while this is setting up. I just wanted to keep an eye on it to make sure that it's got a good seal all around, and it does. So I can go ahead and walk away from that and uh, work on the inside for a minute. I've got the inside of it all sealed up, as you can see. And I'll show you what I used for that real quick. And also a little bit of gasoline on a rag. That rag, actually. Uh, just a little drop of gasoline. Took that fingerprint off that I had actually accidentally left uh, by sticking my finger in that stuff. So, uh, you know, if you're not wearing gloves, like I'm not and should be. But this is the uh, Alex Plus all-purpose acrylic latex caulk plus silicone. Um, that's what I used on the inside. That, that's what I refer to as painter's caulk, basically, because you can use this on anything and it's paintable. Um, but that's what I use to seal up the inside. And then if I, if I want, I can paint around that again, just to clean up the little bit of a, little bit of mess that I got on the wall. But anyway, the fuel door's in, and uh, hopefully tomorrow I can test it out and get some video for you guys. Be nice. We don't have to unload the motors. We don't have to get the gas cans out. Put the line in and fill everything up. Yeah, that's really neat. So after I fill this up, I'm gonna see if I can reach the front motor and top it off. And then these are already full, but normally what I'll do is I'll fill this and these if I can reach the mower, and then I'll have pretty much everything topped off. Okay, and that's... So 13 and a half gallons is what I got in there. Convenient. Guys, thanks for watching. Get out there and make some money, and we'll catch you on the next one.